Hello all, this is Dr. Dave Maslach talking to you about reciprocity.com. The E is written with a three and in this particular video I actually want to talk to you about why saying a learning curve is steep is actually wrong or why mo most of us actually get this wrong. So I'm, I'm a professor of innovation strategy and entrepreneurship and this is something that took me years to kind of finally figure out what was going on. Although I should have probably picked up on this earlier took me a long time to figure this out, but I used to always say, you know, if I was having trouble learning something, that the learning curve was, was quite steep. It was really difficult sort of task for me to actually perform, and it was very, very difficult for me to actually do that particular learning. So the, the problem with this, or what I was sort of thinking about, was that the learning curve was some sort of hill climbing activity or something like that, right, where I was climbing actually up this mountain and the steeper the mountain the more difficult the, that particular activity was. The trouble is a learning curve doesn't actually look like that. This is actual real thing that we actually talk about in manufacturing, in the learning of individuals, in learning of organizations and learning of lots of different things really looking at is one sort of empirical phenomenon that actually happens over time where we're looking at how much performance increases given a unit of experience or unit of something increases um, on the what is what is called the the x-axis right so the more that you actually improve with one particular unit of experience the steeper that curve is going to be so if you improve dramatically by just trying one particular thing right so you actually choose one you, you perform one task right so you can imagine that we like to perform a lot of repetitive tasks or how we actually learn is generally through repetitive sort of simple tasks and we see those repeatedly in the same sort of similar predictable environment right so the more that you perform of that one kind of task so if you perform one unit of that thing and you dramatically improve at that one particular thing, such as the next time you actually do that thing, the next time you actually do it, you, um, you, you, you can do that task very rapidly. So for example, if you're thinking about IKEA furniture, right? So the first time you actually put together IKEA, IKEA furniture, it's gonna be a disaster. All of us are probably gonna wreck most of that furniture, right? We've all been in that experience. And then after, once you perform it, you go and you think, oh, geez, that really wasn't that difficult. I figured out how to put that, that little screw over here or you know, that, uh, to, to put this little widget over there. I know how to do this. And the next time you actually do it, you dramatically improve and it's a lot more easier. You're like, oh yeah, this is so simple to do this kind of thing. When that happens, you're actually having a very steep learning curve. Now, if you were doing something that's very difficult, so for example, you were learning a new mathematical equation with all sorts of like letters and all sorts of Greek that's in it, and you spent hours thinking about this particular thing, and then you go and try to apply that particular mathematical equation and you still can't get it, that is where you actually have a shallow learning curve and that's when it's actually very, very difficult to perform that particular thing because the unit of performance is not increasing very much. It's actually not increasing, it's hardly increasing for the amount of effort that you're putting in or the amount of experience that you're putting in to actually perform that particular task, right? So that is a shallow learning curve. Now, where does this all come from? Now, these are two real examples of learning curves that would happen in manufacturing, right? So one of them would be assembly, right? So that's the IKEA example where you're assembling things and putting it together. Another one is the sort of um, invention or exploration. So that's the sort of mathematical equation kind of thing, right? So you're doing research and development. Well, where does this actually come from? Where do these improvements come from? You know, there's lots of different, actually, we think that it's from knowledge, right? So the acquisition of knowledge, but that's not necessarily the case. There's lots of different factors that could lead to the learning curve. And, and there's all sorts. I'm just gonna name a couple of them right now that I've just recently thought about. So first of all, yeah, there is the acquisition of knowledge. You do are accumulating knowledge and you're getting better at that particular thing because of that accumulation of knowledge, right? So the more knowledge you accumulate, the better you should get at performing that particular task because you're predicting what's gonna happen next and you're going to 
forecast all the particular problems that are going to happen next, and you're not going to do those particular things that are going to cause you problems. Or you're going to come up with solutions to those particular problems. The next thing is that we learn about our particular roles. So if you're thinking about in a large manufacturing setting, or maybe it's in a surgical suite, right? So you're, you're physicians, right? So, um, and, and people study this thing. This is, this is a real thing. You're in a, um, a surgical suite, and then you're trying to figure out how people, you know, after a while, once you sort of interact with those certain people, or you're a co-pilot, in, you know, or you're, a, you know, you're on a plane, and you figured out how to interact with those certain people, then it becomes easier because you know what your roles are and you know what your ex expectations are and you know how to interact with them. So it's going to be quicker and easier and faster to interact with those particular people, right? So this is, this is called transactive memory where you just kind of know who to actually go to and you know what your particular roles are, you know where to actually, you know, who to go to to get some knowledge and they'll tell you what to do and, you know, it's just a much more easier way to interact, right? So it's kind of this network of individuals that you're thinking about and how they actually interact in an organization. The next one that you can actually get is a codified knowledge, right? So you get accumulated codified knowledge. And this might be, so if you think of, come back to the IKEA example, right? You're assembling this thing. Well, what happens if we actually didn't have the instructions to assemble this piece of furniture? Well, it's going to be a disaster, right? You don't know what you're doing because there's no codified knowledge. Nothing's written down. But as soon as you have that written down in instruction, it's much more easier for somebody to pick that up and actually build this thing. And it becomes much easier to assemble this thing than, than what the designer was sort of thinking about when they actually created that particular piece of furniture, right? So that codified knowledge really does speed up the learning curve a fair bit. Um, or, you know, it makes it much more easier to learn for given a unit of experience from that thing. So your performance is going to increase substantially. The next one is you do get this increased specialization that would happen, right? So, you know, come back to the learning the mathematical equation. What you're going to learn, so maybe you're doing a differential equation, right? So it's a form of mathematical equation that is used a fair bit in, in um, you know, in engineering. Well, then you're, you're going to struggle with mathematical, this mathematical equation. You're going to say, huh, you know what? I can't get what I'm doing. I'm going to go read up a little bit on differential equations and try, try to solve this. So you go and accumulate some knowledge, specialized knowledge. And you come back, you become much more specialized at differential equations. And it's much more easier to do because you're specialized on that one particular task. Now, the downfall when that happens, you're not going to actually know so much about other things because you're spending more time on that one sort of spe specialized specific task. But that allows you to sort of execute on that one particular task a lot quicker than, um, you know, than, than if you didn't actually invest that time into that. That's why education, for example, is actually a really good thing for most people. Um, and then the last thing that we often neglect that happens particularly in manufacturing, and this happens in, you know, surgical suites, it happens in sort of, you know, you know, if you're pilots, it happens, you know, in mail rooms and wherever it is. But once you create some sort of value, so you get better at the thing that you're doing, so you get faster, right? Or you produce that IKEA furniture and it's much more sturdy than you initially was. Well, then you're going to invest some of that value that you created into, you know, doing that again or, you know, getting better at that thing. So, so for example, the IKEA furniture example, Right, so you get good at this, and then you realize that, oh, I have a little bit of time. So imagine yourself as you're assembling IKEA furniture, this one kind of IKEA furniture every day. And at the end of the day, you get really quick at it, right? So what used to take you 10 hours to actually complete, now it takes you five. Well, then you go and you say, well, you know what? I'm actually going to spend a little bit more time learning about this one particular thing and actually getting better at it so you can assemble this quicker. Or, so for example, maybe you're selling some of that IKEA furniture. You're reselling it, right? So you assemble it and you resell it. Well, then you take some of that money and you that you've earned and then you buy new tools and equipment, which allows you to actually speed up um, a little bit faster, right? So you get automated equipment instead of doing everything by hand. It makes it go a lot more faster than what you initially were actually performing that particular task, right? So. It's really, there's some really important things to learn about um, with this, but I just wanted to point out, and I myself, for years, I used to say this, and I was like, oh God. Um, and now, now that I kind of figured it out in my head, I thought I'd just share this knowledge. 
you know, just saying that the learning curve is steep is not necessarily correct. Um, it is sort of common knowledge. It's interesting that we do have these sort of idiotisms, I guess, that, that we would say. And, um, you know, but they're not correct. And that happens a lot, actually, if you didn't know. Anyways, hopefully you like this video. Um, do subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you like it, give me a thumbs up. I do appreciate it. All right. Take care. Bye.